Welcome to Stampede Your Business. Stampede. 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 Stampede Your Business. Welcome listeners out there in La La Land, Stampede Land, ready to get on this horse and stampede your business. We've got a great, a great episode today, don't we? Friend. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm I'm really excited about this. This is actually the uh, the the crowning point of the first half of the um, Stampede Your Business book outline. Mm. So if if you remember on our, uh, I think it was our our no- first actual episode, we talked about the outline. Part one is creating a business, and your organizational strategy was the last piece. This is so important. It's something that nobody really does. They start a business and they just start doing the jobs and they start trying to figure things out and they they do what they can. And if they would just take two minutes to go through and really understand the pieces and parts of a business, which is what we're going to do today. That's right. Well, it, <coughs> excuse me. Now, the, the thing about um, going through there and, and doing that, if you're a solopreneur, uh, it still makes a difference to take the time and sit down and figure out what what all those pieces are. And we're going to talk about how oh, you how you grow and expand as a solopreneur, and that you really cannot do that without establishing a real organizational strategy. But even in the beginning, if it's all you, you should still have those pieces and oh, parts set up. Absolutely, and and if you're a partnership then Definitely. it's even more important to be absolutely clear about who's responsible yep. for what, where does the buck actually stop. And the worst thing you can do is say, I'll just take care of whatever and you just take care of whatever and we'll kind of figure it out as we go. That is the worst way to do a partnership. That's a that's a partnership killer. Yeah, that, that, absolutely. That's how, you, that's how you turn a partnership into an enemy ship. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Cool. So your organizational strategy, what are we going to start with on an organizational strategy? Well, how about organizing the company? Let's organize that's, the company. That's probably yep. your first piece. Now, we could talk about a lot of stuff here. There's a, a C Corp, an S Corp, an LLC. There's sole proprietorship. There's a DBA, doing business as. There's all of these different entities, and we, we, could, we could hit them really quickly. Just, just to kind of most people know everything that there is. DBA is probably the easiest. This is you go and you can. I know in Utah for twenty five dollars you can sign your name as a DBA. So if if I'm a person and I just want to start some little business, I can call it a DBA. It's twenty five dollars to enroll that with the state. Just to register. Just that. to register it, and and it's it, there's no protection there. There's no corporate thing. It's your you do your own taxes with it. It's uh, it's the simplest way to start a business. Twenty five bucks to be official in the state of Utah. Uh, then of course there's uh, sole proprietorship, which is kind of the same thing. It's not much different, yeah, really. It's, yeah, it's not. Uh, LLC is when it starts to get uh, limited liability corporation, or uh, that's when you're starting to build in some protection around you uh, within your business. So that- yeah. So that you, there's a, there's a little bit of a buffer between you and your business, and and someone that wants to sue the business doesn't go straight after you. Yeah. They have to go through the business first. Yeah, the interesting thing about an LLC is if you're the only owner of the LLC, it's not that much protection. <laughs> so an LLC, you want you want some other managing members or a different entity that maybe you own that is that is uh anyway we're not going to get into all that stuff deeply that's a lot of legal talk yeah yeah and i'm (laughs) not not a lawyer yeah exactly exactly but so llc is is that and then the s corp is kind of a a a a simple corporation you don't have to have board meetings and all that good stuff like you do with the c corp so uh, that's another show, another place, another world where you can really understand. But you do have to do something. You have to create a business to have a name for that business. You do have to create some kind of an entity. And you have to have a, a general idea of what you're going after and why uh, in, in order to actually create your entity. So, exactly. so having, Do a having, little research yeah. there. And, and there, there's a lot of information online. It's, it's really easy to find a high-level explanation of what each of these are and, uh, and why you would want to pick a certain uh, organization type. Yeah, and we actually at Stampede, 
uh, we, we, we did some really creative stuff. We're, we're a corporation uh, that, that, that has the for- front facing corporation and there's an LLC in the back, uh, in the background. We, we did some, re- you know, this is something you do with a lawyer. This is something that you get super legit with uh, and it's not cheap. It's, it's, you know, if you get somebody to do it right and somebody that knows what they're doing, it is going to cost you some money. So just know that. <laughs> yeah, you can go everybody. Well, I can go get an LLC. I can go down and fill out my articles of incorporation. Yet, yes, you can. Uh, and you can find those online yeah, too. You, you can, can find, find those articles online. of incorporation online. Really I, I don't like to. I, I like to have somebody that knows what they're doing doing it. So, so I always pay a lawyer or a CPA. So, sometimes CPAs are as good as lawyers for well, that stuff. But again, we're not lawyers, so we don't know. Especially if if you're uh, partnering with someone else and, and you want to make sure that you're, right. you're protecting your interests and protecting their interests and and just getting clear about what what you own and and yep. and what your rights are as an owner of the company because that's that that's a really big deal uh, and, yes. and it may not and feel an like a big deal agreement, when you're that stuff is legit you've got to have that stuff it may not feel like a big deal when you're just starting out cuz you're just like excited and we're going to start a business we're going to try mm-hmm. this out and see what happens but if if you stay in that mode too long you you start doing business you start making some money and and then you just never get around to creating a business right and and that that's where things go haywire uh, because so give I, that I did this I I should I deserve that you're not you're not pulling your own weight exactly. kind of conversation that's where that, that operating agreement comes in exactly. you gotta have it uh, and I think it again not lawyers but I think it's the law now you have to have an operating agreement so in most states uh, what is, we've got shareholders versus employees and and I know what that means to me uh, it's very interesting especially when you're a solopreneur. And you don't have, I've had so many people come to me and say, Bobby, I really need some help, uh, but I don't have any money to pay anybody. Uh, not many people want to do stuff for, for the goodness of their heart when it comes to a business, to grow a business for somebody. And I think a lot of people actually do want to do stuff out of the goodness of their heart, but they just really can't justify it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, there's <laughs> true. True. And th- and that's where the shareholders versus employees comes in. If if you can pay employees, hey, that's great. Uh, If you can't pay employees, that does not mean you can't hire some people to help you. You do have something other than money. You have value. You have value value. of that business. Mm -hmm. You have a piece of that business that you can give somebody to jump on board with you. I I always always think about the uh, the dot-com cartoons. Um, you know, in the dot com bus, they were uh, just before that. They they were they were like printing their shareholders uh, stuff on on rolls sh- of sheets of paper, so they could just rip them off like toilet paper, you know, and hand them out. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and and that became a really big joke. But the the point is behind that is is that you really can uh, hand out value company value as payment absolutely as long as a person sees the value and is willing to accept it if you if you've got a great idea and they see the value of your business then you do have something to give yeah and and you can you can uh, negotiate different different ways too you could you could pay them a little bit of of ownership give them a little bit of ownership and and then just give them a smaller salary because now they're part owner as well right and and that way you can still keep them happy as as a salaried employee, but not uh, be have as much liability uh, on caring for their family and making sure that they they're getting their income that they that they want and need. Right, right. So there's a little bit of risk there for for the risk takers, uh, but the, you you like you want those people. You want those yeah, people oh, yeah. that you, if you've got the, them on board with your vision, they're the best ones to have because the ones that you're just paying. They're going to leave if it gets tough or it gets weird or it gets hard. That's true. Absolutely. Cool. So shareholders versus employees. Who who would you rather have in, in your uh, back pocket, Bobby? Somebody that has some skin in the game. Awesome. Absolutely. Every time. Uh, but I have employees. I mean, employees are great. You got to have employees, especially when oh, you, you grow to a certain employees. size. Yeah. You, you, you do. That, that is something you have. But in the beginning, you do have a, a an option because I, I, people tell me all the time, I don't have any money to pay anybody. Well, you have something. Awesome. What about org chart? I mean, organization. Th- this is the big deal. Organization of the business. There's a lot of jobs. 
we talk about the story of, of somebody that's not an entrepreneur. They go, well, I'm a good plumber. Why should I work for this guy when I can go start my own business? You may be a good plumber, mm-hmm. but there is a lot of jobs that a business owner does. And yeah. they're not all just that service work. There's there's a lot of uh, uh, accounting work that that goes. We're going to talk. Play. We're going to we're going to say them right now. There's, and yeah. and there's also a lot of sales that get involved. And and so you all know, just, of it. just got to be good all of it doesn't mean that you're going to be able to be a good business owner it, all by yourself. In fact, most of the time, being a good one thing person that you may kill it at doesn't mean you're going to be a good business owner. In fact, probably not a good business owner. So you need to really Think about that when you're starting a business. And and I, I would have to say, though, that as l- we've emphasized this before in other episodes, that if you find a good partner that balances sure. you out, yes. then, then you've got a really powerful opportunity there. Because if you're really good at something and you find someone else that can fill in all the other gaps... Then, then you've got you've got a power play. Yes, yes. And and we've we've done that with with Stampede. We've got we've got three partners, mm-hmm. and and we all we all kind of have different different strengths. Widely different. Yeah, yes, very yes. different strengths. Yes. Uh, we have we we have the same vision. We have a lot of uh, a lot of similar strengths too, but we have many different and very complementary strengths. Absolutely. And that's how you want to build your your organization. You don't want to go if you're a plumber, you don't want to go find another plumber to to be your business partner right. unless that other plumber has other strengths that uh, that complement yours that you really need. If you look at the greats, uh Apple, Steve and Steve, you know, the 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 the, the totally difference. And, and we talk about Walt Disney is one of the greatest and a lot of people don't talk about Walt's brother, who was the finance person oh, yeah. for Walt Disney. And he was constantly telling Walt, we can't afford it. Hey, hey. He was constantly having to put Walt Disney rain in his in. <laughs> rain him in his dude. We ha- and he goes, Come on, brother, you gotta go find you gotta go find the money for it, man. You gotta go do it. You gotta go do it. Those they were they people would say they were completely two different kinds of people. Completely different. Walt vis- visionary, his brother, such a honed in uh, accountant. So <laughs> you, you got to have that. Yeah, you do. You for, do. For, the, for to do great things. So yeah. what what do we need in a business? What's the organization? So so we need to start with either president or CEO. I mean, the, mm-hmm. it, who, the, the buck stops there at that individual. If you're the owner, it's usually you, whatever well, that looks like. And, and I, and I would, I would advise that you always have at least, not at least one person where the buck stops. Yes, you don't. You don't want to have a board that has all equal say because then if there's a disagreement, you don't ever get anything done, no. or everybody's going to be mad at everybody. And and it's you know if you've got one person that is in charge that everybody just says okay when when he or she says go, we're all gonna we're all gonna do, do it, it mm-hmm. even if we don't agree with it. Yep. Uh, that's that's really important. Yeah, and and if you have somebody that's good at that, that understands that job of making decisions and looking at what's best for the company, uh, it'll move forward. That's right. It'll move forward. That's right. And and if you're the one that started the company, you probably have enough of a love for what you're for what you're doing for what you're creating that you're the best person for the job. But maybe if you're the plumber. And you really just want to be a good plumber and make make more than 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 your boss was paying you, then uh, then maybe you hire someone to uh, to run the show. Many many companies are started with one individual, and then a leader takes over the business and grows it bigger. I've actually been a part of of, of a few of those where somebody started it and then they turned the torch over to someone because they knew it was time. To if we're going to grow to the next level, I don't have the capacity or the knowledge or the ability to take it there. Seen that so many times. Yep. Cool. So then you need an operations. You need the buck stops at operations person. You need somebody with the whip to smack everybody in play That's and right. to move that machine around. So you've got to have that leader of operations and and the operations uh, uh, chief operations officer, whatever you want to call yep. that. You know, there's all these different names, but the. The, the end result is the person that makes everything go is the operations manager, the operations head, lead, whatever you want to call it. That's right. And and uh, if you assign the tasks appropriately, the, uh, the, the CEO actually, in some respects, reports to the 
operations person because if the CEO is not making stuff happen, if they're too in the visionary and 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 managing the day-to-day stuff and and not really getting the momentum that they're that they're supposed to be getting, then the operations manager can you know get get on top of that and say, "Hey, look, it, we need we need to to have something to happen here." And that's why the that's why all of these pieces of the org chart kind of funnel back to the CEO is to keep the CEO not in check, but understanding the company. Yeah. Right. Because the, the end result, the CEO is making all the decisions or the president or whatever you want to call them. Owner is making all the decisions, but if they don't have all the right information, then the decisions were, will, will not be made correctly. They just, no, that's uh, true. Just won't. Absolutely. So, so, so you've got so to have need all of that. those pieces. The operations person though, if, if the operations of the company aren't working, then the company just will not work. <laughs> that's right. So then, then there's the, uh, the president of, of, uh, marketing. marketing. Who's ever in charge of marketing. You gotta have my, it doesn't matter how cool your product is. If nobody knows about it, it doesn't matter. You gotta have a marketing person. Now we say a person keeping in mind that, uh, it may all be you right now. It could you may be. be a solopreneur, but you should be working on creating what these job titles do and are that's right in your business that's right so so if you're a solopreneur and and you're going at it on your own and and you're you're figuring out all the marketing maybe maybe you don't have the wherewithal to pay someone to market for you and you're just going on social media and you're using social media to market cuz it's it's a great tool it's a great way to uh, to market for free uh it's a lot of work but it's a great way to market for free and and if that's the case, then that's fine. Just you got to make sure that someone is is carrying that torch. And that could be a consultant too. You may have just enough money to hire this crack shot consultant marketing person. Mm-hmm. These Absolutely. are the, these. This is a position you should have. It doesn't mean it needs to be a fully paid or whatever. But you've got to think about having all of these different pieces and parts defined in your business. Yep, absolutely. What's next? So we've uh, we we've covered high level. I, I guess we didn't we didn't hit the finance person, but we we talked about accounting CFO. a little bit. So, um, I you know after you after you hit that high level, you you want to start divvying out the. Worker I don't want to. I don't want to say less important jobs. They're, worker they're just, bees. Yeah, the worker bee jobs. The yes. the ones that that don't carry as much clout. Uh, but, but need to get but done. Are are probably even more important, absolutely, than, than your uh, leadership roles. So so you've got everything from your from your sales manager to your actual sales person, um, as well as which could be you. All of you, it could be you, uh, as well as advertising and research, production manager, service, facilities. Yes, Facilities. someone does need to change the toilet paper roll. Yes, and turn the, put some light bulbs in if they need to. That's right. Or now, call somebody to do that, it. That's right. Now, if if you're working out of your house, maybe uh, you're still the facilities may, manager, and you should have that as a right. position. Yeah, absolutely. In your org chart, if it's you, you should have that as a position. Absolutely. So someone's still got to do all that work, and then you've got your accounts receivable and accounts payable, and that's all all falls under the uh, finance part. And, and all of these are different positions they that are. have the ability to have an employee in that position. Now, some of them may have one or two of them, but for the most part, these are individual jobs. And every company has them, whether you're a service, whether you're a, 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 a provide a widget, whatever that looks like, all of these pieces are in every business. That's true. Everybody's so- got to have accounts receivable. You mm-hmm. got to get money. You got to make sure they give you the money. If that's me saying, "Hey, dude, did you get the invoice we gave you? Uh, can I can I have a check for it?" I've been the the accounts receivable and accounts payable guy for a long time, and <laughs> it sucks. But anyway, somebody's got to do it. Yeah, and somebody's got to do it. And, and that's the thing is is if you don't have that planned out, if you don't have it figured out, then you're going to be uh, hammering those out on, on on random whenever it comes up, and you realize that you're behind on it. Then, then that that could be a problem. But the the best part about taking the time in the beginning to assign out these tasks, whether you're a solopreneur or or a or a team of people, the best part about taking the time to do that is is that 
you have a vision that your company is going to grow. Absolutely. And if you have this all figured out, then it's easier to find someone to take burdens off of you when you know what the burden is or or when you've when you've named the burden when you've labeled it and you've 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 called it a role a, a, an assignment a responsibility and these are the tasks that need to be done that I that I have to do all the time now that I don't want to do anymore because my my company's grown and I I just don't have the time right and and so because you have the power to do because you've done this you have the power to do that right yeah and in the end uh, once you do have positions you should have a sign have them sign a contract for each position created and even yeah. maybe you should have a contract made and you sign it for those positions and when we say that that's so the potential employee or even you it's it's written mm mm-hmm. mhm this is your responsibility. So when they come back and go, well, I wasn't supposed to do that. You can say, you know what? This right here says you are supposed to do that. And you signed off that this is a position and a thing that you were going to do. This is, That's right. nobody does this, but it's a very, very powerful piece. Have them sign the contract. It says, this is what I do. Yep. Now, um, because we are Stampede Your Business and we use Stampede as, as our example, let's let's talk for just a minute about what Stampede did for that. Because it, sometimes it, it looks a little bit messy <laughs> when, right. when you're trying to figure this stuff out. Right. Because if you're brand new, you don't know what all the tasks are. Correct. And, Especially when you're still you're, trying to figure out still, the business model. <laughs> exactly. So what Stampede did is, is we said, okay, we, we created an org chart. And we said, okay, this this is here's our CEO. Bobby's the CEO of Stampede, and then I I was a chief. I, I am the chief operations officer, and we have our our, our chief marketing, marketing or sales officer, mm-hmm. and that's Troy, and uh, and we had some other people that were with us in the beginning, and everybody had had a task that's and a role, and and what we did is we said, all right, now now that you have a title, you need to write down what that means. Yep what your responsibilities are as that person and and who you're supposed to be responsible for and what their responsibilities are because until you find someone to, to take those yeah. resp- there that's your responsibility too. Yeah. So we we had everyone separated out into at least two different roles, one upper level and one lower level mm-hmm. and and write down what their tasks are, what their responsibilities are, who's responsible for what. And then, and then we we sent it back out to the group and said, "Is is this good? What does this what does this look like? How how do we uh, interact as a, as yeah, a business?" Yeah, we took a whole day on that. We took a week on that. Yeah, yeah, we did. I mean, we, we there was a lot of back. And, yeah, yeah, there was back a lot of back and forth. and forth. It was very very good. Everybody should do it. Everybody should do it. And and because we did that, um, now things have changed a lot. Yeah, uh, but because we did that, we we can we've molded into the changes a lot more smoothly, I think, mm-hmm. and and we need to come back to the drawing board and sit down and and, and write up our responsibilities and our tasks again. Yeah. So that yeah, this is something that's a continual iteration. Yep. Yeah, and just because it's just because it's your task doesn't mean that nobody else can do it. I just a a, a couple weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago. Um, Bobby showed up to a meeting and he said, Hey, you guys, I've, I've got this all figured out. I've, I've set up this, this timeline for how we're, how we're doing things. And, and my first thought was, man, that was my responsibility. <laughs> Thanks, Bobby. I appreciate that. I'm going si- to excited. I'm going to sign off on that because that <laughs> looks beautiful and I didn't have to do it. <laughs> so, so nice. it's, it's cool when, when, because you, you, you all have, ideas and, and you want to you want to contribute you want, you want to participate don't shut people down just because that's not their role right and it's awesome because then you'd go okay hey i i sign off on this because that was something that i was going to do or whatever blah 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 I, th- or i that, didn't think of doing that just yet <laughs> or, and and it, it it's it's it, it's a way to keep those checks and balances absolutely so it's uh, but be open to that like what you're saying be open to the fact that Oh, hey, this is my thing to stay away. You can't help me. You can't do it. that's just dumb. 
Yeah, that's 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 how you shut <laughs> but, down your but business. But sometimes there are people out there that do that. They they don't touch what I'm doing. And a lot of the reason for that is because they're trying to protect their job. Yeah. I have seen so many of those folks in my life, business life of people trying to protect their jobs. Those are the first people to go. Yeah. They're the first people to go. When you, you when you're so worried about your job that you're trying to do things to sabotage and and show that you're that important, those guys never last. So it's th- trouble. I advise you not to do that. <laughs> All right. So I got on my soapbox there for a second. What's up? All right. So uh so then you once once you've got your organization figured out, then you prototype the position. You prototype everything, really. Just like you said, you, you go down and write what that is, what 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 the pieces and parts of that job is. That's right. And and at this point, you got to think about your business as a franchise. And what 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 do I mean when I say franchise? What I mean is is a franchise is a is a business that sells systems. Um, a McDonald's, for example, is is a franchise. They they sell hamburgers to people, but as a franchise, they they sell a process a process systems. of creating the hamburgers, a, an organization of of uh, pulling in the inventory and everything that goes into running that store. There's a reason franchises succeed ninety percent of the time, and business startups fail eighty percent of the time. Yeah. Because of lack of process and systems. It's the systems that make all the difference. Yeah. Which is which is why uh, Stampede... Build those pro- processes. Build those systems. <laughs> yep. Which is why Stampede Your Business, the the, the book title, when, it, when I first was thinking about this, I, I thought about actually just naming it Systems. Mm-hmm. Because Systems is... The it, it's pieces the key. and parts. It's the key to to creating a business that is worth selling. Yeah, it's it's the key to making a million dollar business. If you don't have systems, then you're just doing work. And and the the your possibility of failure is much higher. Way much higher. Way much higher. Most of the time, people accidentally make it. <laughs> <laughs> those those that, good for them. Those twenty percent that actually make it. Yeah, I'll be I'll be the first to say I got one of those accidents under me. Okay, what's next? All right, so so in in the spirit of that, then once you have those roles and, and everything figured out, you you're going to write down and create an operations manual. And this is something that you can develop over time. Absolutely, um, but it's and something changes. that that uh, that may include checklists. In fact, should include checklists uh, for for every single activity that that you do. So when you're doing your accounts payable. Uh, or your accounts receivable, you, you're you're sending out invoices, you're you're calling on the uh, on the unpaid invoices, client customer, and you're and you're checking your register. Yep. Right. You're making sure that that the money's come in and and that it's that it's been uh, and that pro- should properly be, and that documented. Should be documented. All of those yeah, pieces. Every and parts. single it, everything single step in that process. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. And so you you create checklists and uh, and rules that make things easy, so that when it's time when I, Brett Rich, am the president of my own company, and it's time for me to take take off the president hat and put on the accounts receivable hat, I pull out that checklist sheet and I say, okay, what do I need to do today? And I can follow that, and I can get it done so fast and so easy because I have a process. I have I have something telling me exactly what I need to do. And if I just go down that list, it's that easy. And the coolest part about that is once you're in a position where you can hire that person, you know exactly what they're doing and exactly what they are supposed to do. And they will know instead of guessing. And when, when it comes to hiring that person, you'll know exactly what they're worth too. Absolutely. So you know what, what it's worth paying them for. Yeah. And and I think it's beautiful because you could sit there and the person could say, well, this is the way I did it at my old job. Well, this is the way we do it here. Boom, yeah. boom, boom, boom. You probably tried at, at your old job. Maybe you figured things out. Well, you don't need to figure things out here. You just need to do this, 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 and this. Now, of course, uh, on the on the other hand, if you hire somebody that already knows what they're doing – and you didn't know what you were doing. You were just you just created the and checklist because you, you figured make... out because you figured out what worked for you. Yeah. 
but they know a better way, you can always update your checklist. Absolutely. <laughs> Nothing oh, is you in can stone. always update. Nothing is in stone. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. This is good stuff. But you have a place to start with, and that's what the checklist allows you to do is, is it, it gives you a place to start where you can actually say, this is what needs to be done. Yeah. And the, the key to this is to replace yourself. All of these oh, yeah. pieces and parts is you, 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 the less you can do and the smarter people you hire to do other things, the the more chance you have of having a successful business. That's right. And you don't have a sellable business if you can't play, replace yourself. Exactly. That That is the big key here. That is the if key. If you are the linchpin, then your company doesn't have value. Nope. None well, at all. Well, you know, some value, but <laughs> you could buy you. Anyway, you, you, you guys know what we're saying. All right, so so then when you do hire the employees and you use your tr- your operations manuals to train them, yep. I mean you you can actually train your employees. Uh, but here here's the, the thing piece. though when when you are running it yourself before you hire everyone out, you're running it yourself. If you create those checklists and you're not following those checklists, if you're not following your own rules, then how do you know that they even work? So if you hire someone and you tell them they have to follow these rules, but you and did you're not you doing, and you did whatever you wanted, then you you've got someone that's you're, you're testing something new, something unknown right. on them. You have to follow your own rules. Absolutely, you have that to is do the, it. That is the last piece of this whole puzzle. Is when you do all this stuff, you've got to do all this stuff. You really have to do it if you're gonna if it's gonna work for you. Gotta you gotta be serious about this. Yeah. This is the if this is a business that you that you want to grow and sell, you have to be serious about it. You you can't just go at it and say, oh, I'll, I'll do what I feel like doing today because I don't feel like doing the other thing. Right. You just gotta do it. You just gotta do it, and that's it. That's your organizational strategy. What do you think? Have have an organization. I mean, let's cre- let's create stuff that's that's worth being called an organization. It's not crazy hard, but no. it, but most people don't really think about this. They just do as needed, and it can seem overwhelming. I I was I was taking a course where I was handed a whole bunch of checklists, and just when when they were coming at me, I was just like. <gasps> I was I was about ready to have a heart attack. I was I was I definitely was having an anxiety attack just <laughs> looking at all these checklists and things thinking I have to do all that. But then when I started working on one checklist at a time it got easy. Mm-hmm. And and I thought, "Man, I can I can manage this stuff a lot a lot more easily." There you go. Awesome. Well, I, I think that's about it. What do you think? Absolutely. Yeah. This was good. I, I, I think this is some great information and people just use it. Create that organization. Create it. Be, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Be Organized. deliberate. <laughs> Be deliberate. I like that. Deliberate. I like that better. Be deliberate. And check do do your due diligence and create your business. Yeah, uh, do it on purpose. Don't don't create a business by accident. Yes. Create it on purpose cuz you'll have much higher chance of success. You increase your chance of success significantly. Significant. And we want you to be successful. We want you to be successful. Yeah, that's exactly absolutely. why we're here. That's yes. that's what we're talking about. Yes. So that that this concludes part 1. This concludes wow. part 1. So what, what episode is it? Like ten or something? Uh no, it's it's only episode seven or eight. I, oh, <laughs> <laughs> gosh, it feels like episode fifty. We've, we've been we've been doing this. <laughs> yeah, it feels like we've been doing this for a long time. But uh, that that does conclude part one. And and I just want to so because we just finished up part one, I want to I want to read over what we've covered so far. Just high high level. Uh, why am I in business in the first place? Plan your business. A product worth selling. Ten rules for creating and selling a product your marketing process, and then your organizational strategy. And it all Boom. comes down to creating systems that work. Bam. I love it. Okay, folks. Thank you for listening to Stampede Your Business. Stampede. 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 Stampede, Stampede your, your business. business.